The snappily named Cabalco CKE2500G has a maximum capacity of 250 tonnes. This model of it by Tonkin comes in its own outer shipping carton. And inside the model box is protected by spacers. This particular model is in the colours of Sauron's the Belgian lifting specialist. And as we pull out the trays there seem to be some loose parts and that's probably caused by the trays not being sealed together. The top tray has mainly the luffing jib sections. And the middle one has got parts for the main boom. Lastly the crane and counterweight sits at the bottom. The instruction manual was provided separately to the model and it's very good indeed. There's a full parts list although it doesn't tell you how many of each part is actually in the box. And the step by step instructions are very comprehensive with all written instructions both in English and Japanese. In terms of an assembly sequence these are about as good as it gets. And it does mean you don't have to be a crane expert in order to build the model. So in a sense these instructions are a new benchmark and the only thing that's missing is some information about the real crane. One other very good thing about the packaging is that all of the small parts come in individually labelled bags. So you can match them up with the parts list. At first it looked like one bag was missing on the review model, but in fact the pendants were already pre-installed on a boom section. Most of the connections on the model are made with tiny nuts and bolts, and they look good because they're black rather than brass coloured. To help do the nuts and bolts up you get two small special tools, and they work well and the only thing to avoid is over tightening. The car body of the crane has got what the manual names as trans lifters, and maybe that stands for transport lifters. One thing to note, and it applies to much of the model, is that you might have to clean out some of the small holes with a screwdriver because of excess paint, and getting the pins in can be quite difficult otherwise. Here the cylinder jacket is being pinned in the downward position, and when that's done the pad can be screwed into position. It does have a visible screw thread so there's no smooth faced piston. With all the pads down the crane can support itself and then we can add on the car body weights. And the first thing to do is to hook them in position and again you might need to clean some paint off to make them fit properly. And unless you've got dexterous micro fingers you'll need to use pliers or something else to get the small pins in place. The next job is to add on the separate crawler track frames. And again the paint thicknesses mean that you do have to fiddle a little bit to get the pins in place. Now that the crane is mobile we can add on some extra counterweights onto the car body and it's a nice touch that you can screw them in place so they don't keep falling off. The next job is to mount the counterweight onto the upper structure and firstly we adjust the mast at the back so that the tray can be added. It hooks into position and when you've got it in the right place you then secure it with a couple of pins. The counterweight blocks are all separate pieces but you join them together with lots of tiny nuts and bolts. So although it takes time to make them up, they don't get knocked off the crane easily. Next we add on the boom foot, and that's secured in place with one single long pin. After that with the magic that is cranes etc, we've already built up the boom into a short configuration and attached all the pendants. After that we can take some thread off the winch using the winch key and add on the hook. We can now complete the first round of assembly by adding on some detail. And we start with four sets of steps which press into the crawler track frames. Next we can add a cover that goes over the access to the luffing winch. And that gets followed up by an access ladder which presses into place. There are then some more handrail sections which push into place. And some of these fit very well but others are a little bit loose in their mountings. So you might need to play around with them a little to get them to look right. There's also another cover which goes over the main winch drums. We will now look at some of the details and the crawler tracks are all made up of nice individual metal links. And they're mounted on fairly simple looking track frames which don't have working rollers. The cab is very detailed with metal grab rails and mirrors and there are lots of tiny graphics. At the back the modelling of the counterweight assembly looks really busy and complicated. And the overall impression of the upper superstructure is that it's highly detailed. All of the pulleys used are metal and the pendant connections are plastic, which looks okay but they might not take a high loading. The metal boom sections are nicely made parts, and they've got mesh walkways and tiny graphics at the connection points. They are straight and cast well, 
but there were a couple of slight bends on chord members. The boom head is really good, it's a complex part, and the amount of internal bracing is significant, and it's all been modelled. The luffing jib struts are also highly detailed, and although they were not perfectly straight on the review model, you'd hardly notice. The hook blocks are also metal, and a couple of Sarans branded weights are also provided. To start with, one of the advantages of a kit model like this is that you can use it for transport loads. And here the crane looks good on a suitable truck. However, you do need to fold down the main boom backstops, and the only way to do that is to loosen the rivet that holds them in place. And when that's eased out, you can then lower them to reduce the headroom. We will now take a look at some of the other functionality of the model and start with the crawler tracks. And the good news is they roll reasonably easily although one was slightly stickier than the other on the review model. Operating the luffing winch is easy enough, you use the special key, but with limited thread on the drums you can't lower the mast flat, and none of the winches have positive brakes. One good feature is the main boom pendant equalisers, which even out the tension in the pendants. The model can be posed with either a fixed or tilting cab, and that reflects the options of the real crane. If you pull the cab forward, then it can be tilted to a moderate angle. Moving on to one of the heavier duty functions, and that's rotation. And that's engineered well on this model because rotation is nice and smooth. And if we want to go for a big model, we can add a luffing jib onto the main boom. And once it's fully rigged, it's big and impressive. With the model fully erected, it's time to get the tape out. And it's a big model because to the top of the luffing jib it's about 182 centimeters, or nearly six feet. This is a big and impressive model by Tonkin Replicas, and it looks really good in the limited edition colors of Sarans. By far the best aspect of it is the detailing, and it is in the detail that it achieves a really high standard. Some of the working features aren't quite so good, but it is a very flexible model and overall it's outstanding. <laughs> 